What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon to some out there. It's the Earthmaster here on this Monday, December 19th, 2022. It is about uh, 11.24 a.m. here along the West Coast, California time, and the latest activity there on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows some activity out on the Big Island with a 1.7 earthquake, latest earthquake there on the map. Uh, not a whole lot showing up here on the Earthquake 3D globe there. Now I'm thinking it's because most of it's below the 2.5 threshold. Let's go ahead and check out some activity there on the uh, USGS map real quick. There's definitely some activity kicking up here along the West Coast, but nothing too high in the magnitude department. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, 2.5 and above map here. And again, there's not a lot looking at the... Uh, West Coast area shows a little bit of activity into the Intermountain West regions around Idaho with a 2.9 and a 2.7. Those earthquakes coming in yesterday. So spotty activity at best, but there is some microquake activity around the Bay Area and around the Southern California area coming in within the last hour, just right off the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault and the Brawley Seismic Zone. A little tiny earthquake, 1.2. Aside from that, the West Coast not showing a whole lot of uptick at all. Uh, and that includes areas of Oregon. Up into Washington, there's some spotty activity outside of the, uh, well, let's see exactly where we're at, Mount Baker area. Uh, Rinker Ridge, a couple small microquakes there. Um, into Canada, now they had some further activity up there. I was just checking that out. Earlier this morning, let me back out and show you guys where we're at in Alberta, north of the, oh, I should say south here of this little area, east of Reno area, Nampa. Seen some activity still um, continuing in this little swarm. Now, a couple weeks ago, we had a 5. Point, uh, I think it was a 5.4, 5.5, somewhere around there, um, in the oil fields up here in Alberta. So today we're seeing a little bit of activity in that same area with a 3.5 being reported uh, 21 kilometers east or northeast of Reno, Alberta area, Canada. So a little bit of movement uh, also over here up into the Alaska region, seeing some activity. Uh, actually, that looks like on the other side of the border here of Canada, some very small microquakes. And the USGS kind of showing some of that up here on their map as well. As we zoom into the area, a couple twos and some threes around the region there of Alaska. The remainder here looks fairly, uh, looks about average. No major uptick, no major movement. Uh, the Aleutian Trench looks pretty quiet for now. Uh, Gulf of Alaska area looks like a 3.0 coming in about four o'clock this morning prior to the subduction zone. Uh, about seven kilometers deep there, that's being listed. Western Pacific, Northwestern Pacific Ring of Fire, all super quiet for now. Um, we definitely tapered off a lot, it seems like, as far as the um, activity over the last 24 hours goes. We haven't really seen too much in terms of any specific movement or any large earthquake activity uh, throughout the globe. One earthquake down here late last night into the South Sandwich Trench area, about 56 kilometers deep into that subduction zone. Uh, also some activity there in Chile yesterday, or uh, Peru yesterday. One earthquake, about 3 o'clock in the morning, 4.4, into uh, the Ecuador area. Around the Puerto Rico Trench, still seeing a little bit of swarming up here, north of the British Virgin Islands area. A couple earthquakes there after midnight, some threes. Been somewhat active here around the Puerto Rico Trench recently. Um, so showing a little bit of seismic activity increasing there in that zone. All right, uh, kind of jumped over the rest of the country here, but there's really not a whole lot in the states um, to chat about. Uh, low activity southeastern Oklahoma. One earthquake here in Tennessee, near Madisonville, Tennessee, a 2.2. That one coming in late last night, uh, right around the, uh, just west of the Great Smoky Mountain Ranges. Now there are some fault systems that do run through there, and occasionally we do get some quakes. Over the last seven days here in this area of the all magnitudes shows a little bit of activity uh, amongst those fault systems out there. Nothing major though, just still uh, 
plate tectonics is alive and well. Uh, let's see, the big island of Hawaii. Most of the movement here confined to the Pahala area, although overnight and this morning time period, looks like we had some movement around the Kilauea Crater Volcano area. Um, down to about, looks like maybe 1.1 kilometers, uh, this area has been shown some movement. And that could have to do with the uh, subsidence there of the lava lake. Remember, both volcanoes here stopped around the 9th or the 10th ti uh, time frame this month. Uh, just completely stopped as far as the eruption goes of those two volcanoes, Mauna Loa and the Kilauea volcano. Let's go ahead and check out uh, any uh, informational statement here that the USGS has out. Um, go ahead and check out the Mauna Loa area first. I don't know if, they're, if they even put one out. It's supposed to be every week or so now. Um, yeah, it looks like uh, that was just put out oh, about four days or so ago. Nothing's changed there at Mauna Loa. Um, and we, don't ex we really don't expect anything to change either uh, for now. Let me check out the uh, Kilauea Volcano area. Probably about the same thing. But I do want to check. Sometimes they uh, put out these notifications. Yeah, it looks like uh, the 15th on that one as well. So, everything's just about stable there. I am going to check out some seismograph stations here around the summit area of Mauna Loa. See if we got that uh, ongoing swarm. Doesn't look quite as active, though, on this map. Uh, a couple small specks. There's some earthquakes around the Pahala area, I'm sure. This kind of looks like a well-defined localized earthquake at the um, Mauna Loa summit region, but uh, not quite seeing that signature that I seen on these graphs uh, a couple days back. It was just kind of looking like a, a pretty good intense earthquake swarm up there that has died down now. Uh, they are expecting a pretty windy event coming on here uh, within the next day or so at the summit region and actually all across the big island with a pretty sufficient low pressure system bringing in some wind, uh, which might affect some of those seismograph readings. But uh, for now, it looks like that swarm is kind of mellowing out. And earthquake activity, again, confined to the uh, Pahala area and a little bit around the Kilauea volcano. Um, let's see, we're zipping back and forth today. It's a Monday, right? I think I can do that. Not a whole lot of activity here westward. Notice um, most of these quakes here from yesterday. A lot of older movement, some fours and fives throughout the Indonesia area. A glance here at the recent data. Also some, uh, here's that 5.2 it looks like uh, into the Indonesia area around the Java Trench. But not a whole lot of newer clusters. A lot of times we'll see these smaller rings indicating some smaller earthquake activity. Uh, kicking up here in clusters, but uh, I'm not really seeing that all today. One there south of the Philippines. Uh, we got an earthquake up, what is that, 4.5 up into the Myanmar area that was being reported. That's about the most recent uh, earthquake in this area. So a little bit of westward, northwestward pressure here around this plate bend up here around the northern India area. But uh, that's about it. Very minimal activity, too, as we head to the west around the Mediterranean, Turkey area, and areas uh, around the area. Not, not showing a whole lot of activity today. It's kind of an odd, an odd day. Uh, along the Middle America Trench, shown some earthquakes, a 4.2 and a 4.0, uh, and southward here. But it uh, looks, looks a little calm. Definitely looks a little calm here for earthquake activity today. Um, some of that movement definitely not showing up here on the USGS map. Uh, those fours, it looks like maybe one was off the coast of Guatemala and one maybe down here around the Costa Rica area, but still a little bit of activity showing up from the EMSC model in that region. And uh, man, it's just a little on the quiet side, folks. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Yellowstone National Park, we'll check these guys out here real quick. And... Still a little slow. They haven't really fully came back to uh, a fast server like they were at one time. It takes a little bit to load. Some earthquake activity looks like within the last couple hours or so and this morning time period. Very small microquakes. Nothing major going on. 
there at Yellowstone National Park anywhere at all uh, across the area of northwestern Wyoming. The GeoNet servers, let's make sure we got the latest activity here. And it uh, doesn't look like there's too much happening over here either around Tapo Volcano. Looks like a little bit of movement here being picked up uh, late last night, but overall things are very calm across that area. And the uh, majority of these volcanic drums look pretty quiet for now across that area. All right, uh, space weather activity. Latest informational statement here from spaceweather.com. We did have a little interplanetary shock wave come through that stirred up some auroras at the higher latitudes uh, in the late hours of yesterday. Um, the impact opened a crack, so to speak, in the planet's magnetosphere, setting the stage for uh, possible G1 class geomagnetic storms on the 19th. So it looks like the shock wave may have come from a CME emitted last week by Sunspot AR3165 uh, during that time period where it was shooting off a whole bunch of M-flares. So current conditions here on the auroras um, looks like uh, obviously on the dark side here of the Earth, unlit side, uh, seen some aurora, pot aurora potential up there around Russia and uh, other areas up there. We'll keep an eye on this side here, northern Canada, maybe northern Alaska region. Uh, do you have a potential of seeing some uh, conditions a little bit later on tonight? Uh, the sunspot threat right now looks like a 30% chance for an M flare across the next couple days, 10% for the X class flare probabilities. Now, let's go ahead and check out the latest images here from the SDO site. And uh, I'll, again, I'll continue to use this until the uh, solarham.net site fixes its uh, security issues there. Most recent uh, image, I believe this is the most recent one there. 19, yep. Um, we do have one sunspot here kind of facing us. Doesn't look like a huge threat. Uh, 3163 is kind of scooting off. And this regional sunspot here is a massive one. It's got a huge trail of uh, magnetic structure across the region here. That's a big one. And it's looking like we could see a possibility of some, some further M-flaring from this region, which is going to be, um, oh, what is that, 3168? So I've got to bounce back and forth here between certain web pages. 3169, that's it. 3169 up here. That's a big regional sunspot. 3168 is just that one. Kind of just got one eye looking at us. And uh, I don't think it's got a whole lot of potential there of uh, any major flares. But definitely watch 3169 here in the coming days as we uh, go about this crazy week. Got some much colder weather coming into the, uh, the country. About the center portion of the country. Even down into areas of Texas. Going to Get a little taste of what winter should feel like uh, with that Arctic air coming down straight out of the north. Here in California right now, it's actually kind of foggy. And the fog has lifted a little bit, but still keeping temperatures in the 30s here in the valley. And uh, that doesn't happen too often, at least here in the northern end of the Sacramento Valley. But uh, it's nice. It's keeping everything moist. And um, I'm kind of liking it. Uh, National Data Buoy Center out there. I don't see anything in suspicious event mode. Uh, everything looks pretty calm. Looks like they may have fixed that uh, that buoy station out here that had a little technical glitch uh, a couple days ago. Looks like that's back to uh, standard data. I'm not for sure what happened out there, but sometimes those things can go haywire. And um, looks like they've got that fixed for now. Alrighty guys, I'm going to jump off here. Have a good day. Stay safe. Again, real quick announcement. Um, our member winner, Albert Sanchez Jr., is going to pay it forward. But uh, he wants to create a little challenge here for you folks out there. He wants you guys to create a 300-word essay. Um, if you can, um, you don't have to, but if you want to win 40 bucks, we're going to be grading um, these essays and then pick out a winner uh, the essay is going to be about plate tectonics, um, their intersecting points, and how swarms 
give us info in forecasting future movement. So we got a week. Next Sunday, uh, we will pick a winner. We'll grade over them and uh, pick a winner uh, to win this $40, $40 gift card. Uh, you don't have to be a member here on the channel. You can be whoever. Just You don't even have to be a subscriber, just a viewer here on this channel. But we do want uh, a 300-word essay. And um, send that to earthmastermail at gmail.com. And I'll pass that along to uh, Albert Sanchez Jr., who will grade that as well. And, um, yeah, so get on that. 300 words is very minimal. So... I'm looking forward to see uh, what you guys come up with here. All right, folks, have a good day. Enjoy your Monday. I'm going to go have a little bit more snow fun here with the kids, I think. Um, I like the snow, <laughs> but I have to travel basically about an hour from here up into the mountains to uh, get to that snow, which is okay with me. Have a good day, folks. We'll catch you guys a little bit later on. Peace out.